The Right Weight project is designed to help horse owners understand what the right weight for their horses is. Over 80% of leisure horses in the UK now are overweight, which makes it impossible for owners to understand what or recognise when their ponies are at the right weight. So we're running the project to try and teach owners how to assess the body weight of the horses themselves and give them all the tools they need to keep a monitor on the horse's weight long term. And how has this happened? Well, one of the most important things to remember is that most horses are overweight because their owners love them very much and are trying to do the right thing by them. And it's become very confusing. There are a huge number of products available to feed horses and it's very difficult to know whether you're feeding the right thing. There's also things like climate change to take into account. The grass is growing far more right throughout the year than it used to be and we all know you're supposed to feed your horses more during the winter months to keep the weight on but when the grass is growing through anyway that obviously becomes less important but people are still substituting their horses feed and then the horses are putting more weight on during the winter months going into the, win going into the spring carrying more weight than they should be. There's also been improvements in technology, so where the rugs we used to put on our horses 15 or 20 years ago didn't keep the horses particularly warm and dry, the ones we have now are like great big thick cuddly duvets, they keep them very very warm, they keep them totally dry, so any extra calories they're getting in the feed are going to lay down fat rather than to keep them warm. Another thing to remember is that feeding your horse doesn't just mean giving them a hard feed in a bucket. If they're standing out in the field for 24 hours a day, they're getting a huge amount of food from the grass. If we're giving them hay, they're obviously getting a lot from that. And in fact, most leisure horses in this, in this country will get more calories than they need just from grazing alone, which I always find quite surprising. Also, we all know that we're supposed to feed our horses according to workload, and almost all the feed companies categorise their products according to light, medium or hard work. But the problem is it's very difficult to know exactly what those terms mean. For example, somebody on one yard might be riding their horse a couple of times a week. Somebody else might be riding out five times a week and doing a jumping lesson at the weekends. The person who's doing the greater amount of work could understandably think that their horse needed to be fed for medium or hard work. But actually, both of those horses are in light work at most and probably may even get away with a maintenance diet. The feed companies are feeding everything from a companion pony out in the field all the time up to your three-day event horse and Olympic medal winners. So you know, th there is a huge range there that they need to fit into and it's just trying to make sure that you're feeding your horse correctly for the amount of work that they're doing and for the type of horse they are. What we're not saying with this project is don't feed your horses because it's very, very important to keep something going through their system all the time. They've evolved to eat for about 20 hours a day and, and if you cut down their food, you can develop other problems. So it's very important to keep something going through their system. What we're saying is try and feed them appropriately for what they're doing. So why does it matter if a horse is overweight? Isn't it okay for them to be comfortably cuddly? Well, it's a very good question, but unfortunately there are a number of health issues that horses horses can suffer from and just like people the horse that's overweight for a prolonged period can risk problems with their heart and lungs with their joints and limbs but there are also conditions like laminitis which are specific to horses now most horse owners will have heard of laminitis it's a very common condition but because it's so common it's very very easy to underestimate it um, a lot of people have heard of it but don't necessarily know exactly what's involved in laminitis and I'm just going to explain a little bit about what happens inside the horse's hoof now, the hoof wall is actually held on to the underlying structures and the bones in the feet by sensitive structures called laminae, and they interlink. It's a bit like the hoof being held on by Velcro, if you can imagine that. Now, when a, when a horse gets laminitis, what happens is those sensitive structures start to pull apart. So if you can imagine that Velcro pulling apart, the hoof wall is actually separating from the structures in the foot. And in very, very severe cases, what can happen is those structures can become so separated that the bone inside the hoof drops through the sole. And I mean, you can imagine how incredibly painful that must be for the horses. We would always ask everybody to treat any case of laminitis as a veterinary emergency. There are loads of different causes of laminitis, but overweight horses is one of the major reasons at the moment. But it's also avoidable. And if we can try and stop horses getting laminitis through being overweight, that will be a huge step forwards. Another condition that horses can suffer from if they're overweight is hyperlipemia. Now, hyperlipemia, unlike laminitis, isn't very common at all, but it, the consequences of it are very serious. What happens with hyperlipemia is it's caused when all of the fat stores in the body flood into the bloodstream and it's incredibly difficult to treat. Something like 65% of horses that get it won't recover. And the reason that I'm mentioning it is that one of the triggers of hyperlipemia is crash dieting. 
So what we're, what we're saying is, please don't crash diet your horse. If you do have a horse that needs to lose weight, it's vital that you do it slowly and carefully and keep something going through their system. Because if you suddenly stop feeding them anything, you are risking hyperlipemia, which leads to chronic liver failure. And anybody who's familiar with ragwort poisoning, for example, it's the same thing, same symptoms that they get. So things like blindness, loss of coordination, difficulty breathing, and ultimately the horse will die. Now, as I say, it isn't a very common condition at all, so I don't want anyone to panic that their horse is going to get it. The only reason I'm mentioning it is because it's so important that you don't crash diet an overweight horse, because that's one of the things that, that you're risking. Have you got any examples of where being um, overweight has caused major problems in a, in a pony or horse? Just to give you an example of some of the problems that being overweight can cause, we took in a horse called Dollar into our penny farm. And Dollar's a 14-2 gelding and when he came into us he was extremely overweight and he had laminitis and intermittent lameness problems. It took about nine months for us to get Dollar to the right weight and he was actually carrying an extra 28 stone. Now, if you realise that Dollar's a 14-2 gelding, if you had a 28 stone rider on that, most people would be absolutely horrified at the idea of somebody that heavy riding a pony that size. Yet Dollar was carrying that weight 24 hours a day and it had caused the laminitis problems and the intermittent lameness problems. Although once Dollar lost the weight, he, the lameness problems disappeared and the laminitis is under control, he will always be prone to laminitis, so his weight will always need to be managed. And if he puts the weight back on, those intermittent lameness problems will, will almost certainly return. But in contrast, if I tell you about a horse called Bahia, who is a similar height to Dollar, about 14.2, when he came into our care, he was the same amount underweight as Dollar was over. So he, had, he was about 28 stone underweight. When Bahia arrived with us, he was incredibly underweight, severely emaciated. He didn't have any underlying reason why he was underweight, it was simply that he hadn't been fed enough. And it took us about three months to get him to the right weight, so it was a far quicker process than getting the weight off Dollar. And also, once that weight was back on, his problems are over. He has no long-term effects from, from being underweight on arrival. But as I explained with Dollar, the long-term effects will, will, are far-reaching. He will have problems for the rest of his life. So as you can see, the implications of a horse being overweight for a prolonged period are far more serious in a lot of ways than a horse being underweight when there's no medical reason why they are. You've told us now that the horses are overweight, so how can I see if my horse is overweight? The best thing you can do is fat score your horse on a regular basis. 